Hello, my name is Rob Cromwick, and I'm a meteorologist here at ABC 10 in Northern California. Now, I've been forecasting at this station for more than 10 years and in California for more than 15. So I understand some of the real unique challenges of forecasting for such a big state with so many different variations in geography and weather. And one of the big challenges that we have to deal with on a day-by-day -day basis is California's microclimates. Now, this is a real challenge, and let me just point out one example, and I could pick out dozens and dozens. Here you have Atascadero. It's a charming town. It's small, but it's along California's central coast. Now, it's not right on the ocean, but it is very, very close. Now, to get right on the ocean, you go down the road, so to speak, literally down the road, and you have Morro Bay. Now, Morro Bay is another amazing spot right along California's coast. It's well known for what they call the rock, but it's just a really great community, and it can have dramatically different weather on the same day. Now, this is a challenge up and down California for Northern California, Central, and Southern. Let me give you another example. Mount Shasta is 14,000 feet, and it's not very far from the ocean. It could be snow-capped, and just... Uh, south of Mount Shasta, you've got Redding. It could be one of the coldest spots and also one of the warmest spots throughout the course of the year. You've got Lake Tahoe, which is a huge, big alpine lake that's very, very deep. And then in some cases, you have huge dramatic changes in geography. The, the tallest mountain in the lower 48 is not in Colorado. They have many mountains above 14,000, more than 50, but ours uh, is Mount Whitney, and it's the tallest one in the lower 48, and very, very close to it, we have the lowest spot in, in the lower 48, which is, of course, Death Valley, which can have some of the hottest temperatures on planet Earth. So let's get back to the microclimate. <clears throat> Literally, the difference between Atascadero <clears throat> and Morro Bay is right down Highway 41, and it is only 13 miles. On one summer day, I decided to do two live shots one at 5 p.m. and one at 6 p.m. This is back when I worked on the central coast of California. In Atascadero at 5 p.m., it was 100 degrees. At 6 p.m. on the same day in Morro Bay, it was 55 degrees, foggy and drizzling. And again, it's only 13 miles away. California has these setups up and down the state. And again, focusing on just those two communities not very far away, the average July high temperature and weather in Atascadero, it's 91 degrees and sunny. In Morro Bay, it's 67, very often with fog in the morning and the evening, and quite often you have drizzle. So it's really what sets California apart is having so much drastic and challenging weather forecast on the same day at the same time. And you really have uh, a lot of different reasons to attribute that, the proximity to the ocean. You have the various uh, changes in the mountains and elevation. And then you get to other states where you can have major challenges in places like Kansas, but the microclimates are a little bit tougher to come by. For example, the average normal temperature uh, during the course of the year can range from the low 50s to the mid 50s, from one end of the state to the other. So California really does have dramatic and challenging weather forecasts. Trust me, I know it. I've been doing it for a long time. And sometimes it can vary dramatically just a few miles down the road at the same time on the same day.